Fallout has a lot of unusual things. An eldritch deity, aliens, cryptids, a literal ghost. It's safe to say that their universe is far from ordinary, but one thing that we rarely see in Fallout is magic. Now when I say Fallout and magic, your mind may be drawn to Oswald Oppenheimer, also known as Oswald the Outrageous, a stage magician found in Nuka World, who we can watch perform some questionable abilities. The first of which is his ability to teleport. Upon meeting Oswald for the first time, having survived his traps, he declares that his interest is piqued, and then he teleports down to the ground. At first, this appears to be magic, but is nothing more than an illusion, a simple parlor trick that he used to use during his pre-war shows. But there is something else that he can do that is arguably real magic. After teleporting, Oswald will use his powers to bring dead feral ghouls back to life. How does he do this? Is it another illusion, or something more? We know that ghouls are healed by radiation, and that glowing ghouls, or luminous necrotic post-humans, are ghouls that glow because of how much radioactive particulate has accumulated in their bodies. That particle buildup can then be forcibly released in a powerful surge of energy that heals the glowing ghoul, as well as any other ghoul that happens to be touched by the radioactive surge. But what Oswald is doing is the extreme version of that. He's not just healing other ghouls, but bringing them back to life. An incredible ability that sounds almost too good to be true. However, we can read about the first time Oswald used this power. On Oswald's terminal inside King Cola's castle is a terminal entry titled, Was That Real Magic? It reads, There was a big attack today, and Dean got hit by a stray bullet. The thought of losing another of us caused me to snap, and suddenly it was as though energy was literally flowing from my body. Then Dean just shot up and gasped for air. I healed him, but I have no idea how. After the attack it hit me, was this some sort of mutation, or was it real magic? I mean, given the circumstances, who could tell the difference? Even if we had a scientific explanation, does that really make it less magical? Regardless of what I want to call it, maybe I can use my powers to help the afflicted. This event was also witnessed by Rachel Watkins, a member of Oswald's group, who also documented what she saw. On Rachel's terminal is a terminal entry titled, Magic is Real. It reads, There was a huge attack this week that pushed us all the way back to the castle gate. Just when we were about to fall back to the theatre, a bunch of the afflicted started crawling out of their houses and started helping us out. But as our attackers were retreating, my body froze when I saw a stray bullet hit Dean, and it looked like he was dead. But Oswald did something. This glow came out of his body, flowing like a wave. Suddenly, Dean started breathing again. After the attack ended, we all looked at Oswald who started muttering something about using real magic. Most of us didn't know what to think. Me? I don't care what the hell you call it, maybe we can use it to cure the affliction. Either way, I gave him a huge kiss for saving Dean's life. Magic or not, Oswald can bring ghouls back to life. In other words, he's a necromancer. And other glowing ghouls can sometimes be seen using this same burst of radiation to reanimate other ghouls, so they too would be necromancers. Only instead of using resurrection magic to return the dead to life, they're using radiation. They are literally using power to influence events through mysterious or supernatural forces. By definition, Oswald and other glowing ghouls are magical. Surprisingly, this isn't the only example of magic in Fallout. Another group of individuals capable of using power to influence events through mysterious or supernatural forces are psychers. While the list of psychers is incredibly long, I have already talked about them in their own dedicated video. So for now, I will simply talk about those from the first two games, as I feel they have enough information to get my point across. So we have Wiggum, Lucy, Moore, and Gideon, the four psionic warriors beneath the cathedral in the Boneyard, Chuck in Aditum, Akunin in Arroyo, and Melchior in Mariposa. Between these characters, they can control fire, electricity, read minds, control objects with their mind, see the future, speak to people in their dreams, 
and transform living creatures, albeit using FEV as a catalyst to do so. What these people are capable of is also known as pyromancy, electrokinesis, telepathy, telekinesis, premonition, and transmutation. In any other fantasy game, these abilities would be classified as magic. Moore is theoretically a pyromancer, and Melchior is an alchemist. But because we know that FEV and mutations are the cause of their powers, then what they can do can no longer be called magic, yet what they do is genuinely magical. As Arthur C. Clarke once said, magic is just science that we don't understand. And I couldn't agree more. We know the reason why they can do these extraordinary feats, yet the science behind their abilities is incredibly vague, and as such, I feel like we can get away with saying that what they do is magic bordering on science. And glowing ghouls and psychers aren't the only ones who appear to possess magical powers. There's also dark magic in the form of the Krifbeknir, which is arguably the most magical thing in Fallout in the sense that we don't fully understand its powers. But somehow, it is connected to the obelisk beneath the Dunwich building in Washington DC, and through it, individuals are lured into a life of servitude that only ever ends in death. But those who hold the book seem to be granted eternal life. Constance Blackhall was one such individual, she became obsessed with the occult and used her vast wealth to obtain the Krifbeknir. With it, she was able to live an unnaturally long life, and her followers, who dubbed her a priestess, all died while she continued to live long after they were gone. It was only when the Krifbeknir was stolen did she finally die. Was the book the source of her longevity, or was it Ugqualtoth, the deity behind the book? Either way, Obadiah Blackhall, her descendant and possibly last living relative, is aware of the book and wants it back. Perhaps he's hoping to use it to escape death, which draws ever closer with each passing day. But when his time comes, were he to have the book, then maybe it could give him the same life-lengthening powers it did Constance. In the end, whether it's a mysterious book, psychers, or glowing ghouls, powers exist in Fallout that could be considered magic. Some of them may be partially explained away with science, but what they can do, bringing the dead back to life, reading minds, seeing into the future, and even escaping death itself, is by definition, magic. Be sure to show your support by liking the video, and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.